Hello, every awesome human in the world. Thank you again for jumping on. So let's talk about the deep roots that influenced Neville's understanding of scripture. Okay, because that comes from the Hebrew and the Greek. And I took that when I was in university. And I want to share with you some insights just to help you break down if you are a person who is trying to use scripture as the tool book that it's meant to be used, okay? So Neville says that scriptures are not historical, that they are psychological, and that they're speaking to the inner self. It's like a guidebook. It's like a Google Maps for the inner self, okay? So any verse that's talking about power and might, especially ones where it's talking about us using it, or he uses his power and might, or the Lord is mighty and powerful, Okay, and we know here that the Lord is the metaphor for the imagination, right? Now, mighty, might and power are very highly connected in that they share the same root in Hebrew, okay? Now, let's talk about power for a second, and then might, and then how you could use this to help you manifest, or even use as a measuring tool for manifesting. So, okay, power, what it's not is, power is not abuse, Like we have a very messed up view of power in the world today. And power almost means I can control or have control over you. And even though there's a little bit of that in the meaning here, there's more to it. And there's actually something very powerful from it. So it comes from the Hebrew word tokef, right? So, and again, might actually shares the similar root of that word. Now, power is something that is a prevailing over. Here's the thing. Prevailing over doesn't mean control. Okay, we need to really, really make sense of this. Prevailing over, and in some places, it actually means to be emphatic about. Interesting, right? Because power, we think, means I need to be stronger then. So then we think It's all about mentally forcing ideas out or mentally shoving ideas in. And like, I've got to think I'm rich. I've got to think I'm confident. I've got to think I'm loved. I've got to, I've got to. That's not what's being said here. So when it says emphasized, that's like when somebody or when you're driving down a road, for example, and you see a red sign, that's emphasized. We know that usually that's going to mean stop right? Or yellow, and this is in America, yield, right? And so we know that there are certain colors or semiotics or symbolic meaning to colors as they're attached to certain signs and symbols. This is exactly what's happening with the idea of power and might. Understanding power and might is saying, this is what I want to emphasize, okay? So power isn't, I've got to fight against, I've got to feel more powerful then, right? Again, all of those are very human approaches and very human ideas to how we understand power today, okay? It is not about hierarchy, who's in charge, who's who's the leader, because remember, this is psychological, okay? So power and might are psychological. So if you are trying to force your manifestation, that's not power. You would think that is because that's what our culture says is power when we're forcing, okay? If you're trying to muster up faith, that's not power, okay? If you're going to church or if you're lighting crystals or if you're doing all of those things to feel like you're in the state, that's not power. That's not a judgment, by the way. I'm trying to show you what power is not so that you know what it is, to give you a clearer picture, okay? But also to give you a way to test. Am I using the egoic power, the ego power, the Caesar's world power, or am I using the mental power, the Hebrew understanding, the mystical understanding, right? The tokef, right? Because again, what's very interesting also is that when you turn from the word power to the word might, you end up also, the base root meaning of that word is construct or to, like I just said earlier, to emphasize, right? They share this definition. Power is to emphasize, So how does that work? How can you use that? If it's not about force, if it's not about pushing, if it's not about, you know, feeling guilty or bad because you have had bad thoughts, that's not power either. So if you have guilt because you just had a doubt, then you're not using your power. Because remember, scripture says that Christ is the power of God, 
right? Paul says this, and Christ is your human imagination. That's you. That's what this is doing here. It's using power, but power is construction. That's literally what the, the Hebrew word is for might. It means to construct. Interesting, right? So what does that mean for you as a manifester? What does it mean for you to use power in your manifesting? Here you go. If the word might or power shares the deep Hebraic root of construction, then constructing your scene and living in that construction is your power. That's how you use power. You use it to construct. So again, let's make this practical, okay? Let's say, I'm gonna choose a really simple, dumb example. Not dumb, but I'm gonna use a simple example of let's say you wanna get more confidence, which is a great thing to have and a great thing to want, okay? But if you're sitting there trying to do seven different techniques, whether it be going to therapy, nothing wrong with therapy, I'm a big fan of it, go to therapy. But that's not the point. If you're using that to feel powerful, if you rely upon it like an addiction to find power, and every time you go, then that's the only place where you feel powerful, then that's not going to work long term, right? So, because one, that would just be creepy of you sleeping on the carpet of your therapist's office waiting for them to show up. That's also called a criminal behavior. So, what I want you to do is I want you to understand that to use power and to use might is to understand that there's no force at all, okay? So when you are trying to use this to gain more confidence, you are living in the construction. You are emphasizing not what you don't have. You're emphasizing what you do have, which is confidence. Do you understand? So to use power, to use might, to understand it the way that Neville was approaching it when, when he would talk about power, right? And to also understand the biblical understanding is that you combine those two concepts together, power and might, right? And there are several verses in the Old Testament that says, you know, the Lord is mighty in power, okay? And so the idea is, is that the construction, right? The, the, the ability to create things in your mind is your power, right? That's your power. Not to force situations, right? Not to try to guilt other people into giving you what you want, not trying to manipulate relationships to be what you want, and so on and so forth. It is quite literally taking this and realizing that the ability to construct and emphasize living in the end, emphasize the feelings of living in the end, that's power. That's true power. So I would love for you to use this technique. Try this technique for at least a minimum of 14 days every single day where you emphasize the new person. You de-emphasize the old person, but how? By emphasizing the new. That's your power. That, that's what it means to have power. That's what it means to have might, to be emphatic about it, right? So rather than fighting against something, you simply overcome it. You prevail over it by becoming the new person, by emphasizing the new person, by constructing scenes from the perspective of the new person, right? So use your power wisely. Let me know if this helped you in any way. Share below. And uh, thank you again for jumping on. Much love to you all. Be safe. Bye.